You got your broccoli? Check. You got your chicken breast? Check. You got your gym routine? Double check. So why aren't you leaning out yet? Why aren't you gaining muscle? Why aren't you looking the way you want to look? Hey, Marcus Philly here with Functional Bodybuilding. And in a recent video, actually two recent videos that I've shown here on this channel, I showed you how I stay lean year round without doing big bulking and without cutting diets. I also showed you how to simplify cooking and make quality meals without overwhelming yourself in the kitchen. Once you start to understand the mentality of fueling your body to meet your energy demands for training, while also eating nutritious food for longevity and for health, you're probably gonna start wondering, hey, how much do I eat? What's that magic formula for calories and macronutrients to get me feeling strong and also get me a great physique? So today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to calculate your numbers. And I'm even gonna give you a free tool to make it super easy to do. But to give yourself the best chance of success, you probably and should already have great habits in place, like cooking most of the food that you eat for yourself using simple ingredients, like sitting down to eat at regular times of the day instead of rushing around, like chewing your food thoroughly and drinking plenty of water throughout the day. See, those habits are what to work on first before you start to worry about any of these numbers that I'm gonna talk about in today's video. It's super important that you understand, macronutrients are not the magic fix because our bodies are going to change over time. Our activities are going to shift and there's always ways our energy is gonna be changing both on the input and the output and we can never measure it super precisely and with absolute accuracy. Things like digestion and other bodily functions, the impact of stress and hormones and lifestyle, all of these can factor into your energy balance equation and impact our energy outputs and inputs. I don't think any of you, including myself, want to be tracking macros every day for the rest of your life. So we really want to build those foundational habits that I discussed earlier and then we're going to use these numbers as one tool among many to help guide you in the right direction over time. Like I said, calculating calories and macros is not a precise science. Figuring out what your macros and calories need to be at any given time for any given goal is also not a super precise science. We always consider these educated guesses and the real work begins when you start to take the numbers that we're going to calculate today and you put them into your life practice day in and day out with as much precision as you can bring. So my goal today is to show you how to use an online calculator to get as educated a guess as possible so that you start off on the right foot. Let's dive in. All right, we'll start with step number one, which is avoiding these common mistakes. The number of calories that you might need to eat in a day is gonna involve your basal metabolic rate which is what your body needs for vital bodily functions when you're just remaining at rest throughout the day. Your basal metabolic rate can be calculated using a body fat percentage and your body weight, or it can be approximated based upon your weight, your height, your age, and your gender. So if you don't have an accurate body fat percentage from a recent skinfold measurement, DEXA scan, or in-body scan, or something similar, these numbers are going to be a guess. So it's important to just keep that in mind for later. And don't make mistake number one, which is relying too heavily on approximated numbers of your body fat percentage. If you can get out and have your body fat percentage measured by a trusted and repeatable source that is always the best when you're trying to estimate your basal metabolic rate for calculating your macros and your calories for the day. I'm gonna be using the Functional Bodybuilding Macro and Calorie Calculator, which there's going to be a link in the description below to. If you leave your body fat percentage blank in this calculator, you'll get approximations. If you fill it in, you'll get a much more accurate calculation if you know your true body fat percentage. The second most common mistake that I see is people overestimating their activity level, which is really the second part of the equation to get your daily calorie target. 
I know a lot of you consider yourselves active or highly active people because you train several times a week. But the reality is that you're actually sitting at a desk for the majority of your time outside the gym and you are therefore more sedentary. Activity calculators like the one that we use in the functional bodybuilding macro calculator, it really takes a look at your entire activity over the course of an entire day or a week. And if you're training five days a week for an hour a day, remember that is just five hours of your entire week. And you really need to be mindful of what your general activity level is over the course of the entire week. So think about whether you're being more of a sedentary person because of your lifestyle, because of your job. And this is not to discredit the fact that you're out there training hard. We just wanna get the most accurate number possible when we're estimating your calorie needs on a given day. Why is this all important? Well, if you get this part wrong, what's gonna happen is it's gonna to lead to your baseline numbers being too high for your true needs, which makes it much harder to lose weight if that's your goal. So pay close attention to these guidelines and go a bit lower if you're not sure. If fat loss is your goal, then my suggestion is to err on the side of underestimating your activity. So if you're between two levels, like low and moderate, then I would choose the lower one. And remember to keep this in mind, by taking these first two steps, calculating your BMR, and then setting your daily activity level, you're establishing now how many calories you need each day just to maintain your current body weight. Okay, step number two, we're gonna choose what your goal is on the way to getting your macros and your calories calculated for you specifically. Ask yourself, do you wanna lose weight? Do you wanna gain weight? Do you wanna recomposition your body? Or do you just wanna maintain your current physique? All right, now you have a number that guides you to your estimated daily energy expenditure. And we wanna adjust those calories to help move you towards the goal that you've set. So if you eat the same calories, that you burn each day, then your weight and body composition will likely not change. So we need to move you into a deficit or we need to move you into a surplus if you wanna lose fat or gain muscle respectively. In the FBB calculator, these goals that you're seeing in the middle range, the recomposition or lean muscle gain, these are gonna be the easiest to sustain and are more beginner friendly. They represent 10% changes to your maintenance calories. If you wanna go for bigger change in a shorter amount of time, choose one of the challenge goals that represent 25% deviations from maintenance. These can be motivating at first, but keep in mind, you'll likely wanna come back to this calculator later and readjust if you're finding it hard to sustain either of these 25% deviations. Okay, step number one was setting up your baseline calories, what it is to get maintenance. That included basal metabolic rate, then that also included your activity adjustment based upon your activity level. Step number two was defining what your goal is. Do you wanna stay at maintenance or do you wanna go into a surplus to gain weight or do you wanna go into deficit to lose body fat? Now, step number three, we gotta break that number, that new target calorie for the day into macronutrients. We gotta figure out what your macros are right now. See, once you know how many calories you're shooting for in a day, you can break that into how much protein, carbs, and fat you might need. The breakdown of these nutrients will play a role in your overall look and body composition when you arrive at your goal weight. Simply cutting calories might get you smaller, but to look more lean and muscular and to get stronger too, adequate protein is crucial. See, the proper balance of macronutrients for you will also keep you feeling more satiated and energetic throughout the day. A very important note. There is no perfect macronutrient profile. So when people ask me, hey, what macro should I be on? This really becomes a personal question. I never recommend one approach across the board. Your daily calorie goal and getting sufficient protein, they, they seem to be the most consistent for everyone. Establishing how many carbohydrates and how much fat you're gonna need has a lot of variance personal preference, genetic differences, sport demands, and lifestyle can all impact what approach to carbs and fats works best for you. So for that reason, we created the FBB calculator to have flexibility built in. One unique thing about the FBB calculator is that it allows you to select your preferred approach to protein and carbs, and it will balance that out with the fat in order to match your total calorie goals for the day. 
when choosing your protein amount, I recommend high protein for most people. What this does is it sets your baseline at one gram of protein per pound of body weight. However, if you have a lot of body fat to lose, you could go lower than that. And if you have a lot of muscle that you want to gain, or you're already pretty lean to begin with, you could even choose a heavy protein option, which would represent 1.1 grams per, of protein per pound of body weight. For simplicity's sake, if you were to track your protein and make sure you hit this number every single day, along with your calorie goal, then you would be well on your way to measurable success. You could eat carbs and fats however you'd like to make up the rest of your calories from your meals for the day, so long as you're hitting that calorie number and you're hitting your protein number. However, I know for many of you, that's not enough. You wanna know exactly how many carbs and how many fats to eat on a given day. So next up is calculating your carbohydrates. And remember, carbs are not the enemy. The enemy is rather over or under consumption of calories and inadequate protein. Carbs can definitely support fat loss and getting ripped and shredded. So don't believe people that say low carb is the only way to go. The reality is that whatever approach you like the most that satisfies you and keeps you consistently hitting your calorie and protein goals, that's what's gonna be best for you. Now I realize carbs don't work for everybody. If you find carbs to always be a slippery slope for you and you find that you can't control yourself well with too many, then choose low carb. If you like carbs and you know you perform better in the gym with them, the high carb track can work for you. This can support better workouts, and if you train with intensity and need glycogen stores, then high carb might be the best approach. I think choosing the moderate ap approach is a great place to start if you've never calculated macros before, or if you just want that middle of the road approach that doesn't swing you too far towards high or too far towards low. One more plug for choosing the moderate track with carbohydrates and then subsequently fat is that when you kind of stick to the middle and you choose something moderate, what that means is that you're not trying to fight the macronutrient game every single day. If you choose low carb, then you have just such a small allotment of carbohydrates. And when you reach for foods that are readily available or are normal to see on a plate, you won't have to manipulate things so much to ensure that you're keeping your carbs low. There's nothing like saying, hey, I'm doing super low fat right now. I can't eat these 10 things because they have too much fat in them. Choosing moderate allows you a little bit more wiggle room. And remember, we're trying to hit our protein numbers. We're always trying to hit our calorie numbers. And the wiggle room of a moderate approach to carbs and fat can really afford you some more lifestyle ease and more food selection choices. All right, the last thing to note on the carbohydrate selection category is that the FBB calculator also gives you the option to carb cycle. This is when you alternate low carb and high carb days throughout the week on a schedule that you decide or we can give you some direction on. You might eat low carb on rest days, high carb on days that you have heavy training or some other pattern that works for you. This is a much more advanced approach, and I really only recommend it to people who are experienced in tracking macros and really want to dive deeper into body composition adjustments or performance gains. The truth is that you're going to see results without it as long as you're consistent with those foundational habits. So this is by no means a must-have approach, but it's something that's available inside the calculator should you choose to want to do that. Okay, and finally, we're arriving at fat. Now, fat is just going to be calculated as the remainder of your other macronutrients once you've established your protein and your carbohydrates. So the higher the carb, the lower the fat, and vice versa. You need fats in your diet for essential bodily functions, including cellular repair, tissue health, hormonal production, and nutrient absorption. And the FBB calculator will adjust this number if you end up too low for some reason. So to make sure that you're getting enough, we have a built-in system inside the calculator so that you don't drop into levels that won't support proper health and proper performance. Look, if you're controlling for calories, then eating fat has no inherent issue to it. The only challenge is that high fat foods can often mean that you're eating less volume of food and you might see yourself not getting to eat as much. However, remember that fats can also be satiating 
They'll be helping you to feel full longer. Okay, so you've inputted your body metrics to get your BMR. You've inputted your activity level to get your daily maintenance calories. Then you selected your goal. That's going to guide you to your target calories for the day. And I walked you through step by step how you arrive at the macros that are going to be best for you. When you arrive at the end, be sure to enter your email address so that you can get a copy of your macros sent right to your email inbox. And we're also going to send along some more nutrition and training resources so that you can get started on your journey towards the body that you want. I'm going to reiterate this for one last time. It's an important reminder, so listen up. The breakdown of protein, fats, and carbohydrates, your macronutrient breakdown. Remember, there is no magic formula. Don't believe anyone that tells you that 30, 30, 40, or 50, 25, 25 is best. Finding what works for you is best. Some macronutrient profiles are much, much more difficult to follow than others. Just think, if you're doing 75% protein, 25% carbs, and 0% fat, that means you are literally going to be eating chicken breast and egg whites all day long with a little bit of fruit. It means that you could never eat a steak or an, an entire egg with the yolk since it would put you over your fat numbers immediately. Oftentimes, the best macronutrient profile is simply the one that allows you to eat the foods that you like in quantities that make sense for your goals on the plate. The other important note is that once you have your numbers, remember, these are just estimates. I gave you some seriously good resources on how to estimate all of these numbers the best that you can. But let's say you've gone astray in estimating your activity levels or any number of other factors. The best way to check is to track your food carefully for at least two to three weeks, then measure your progress in at least two ways, such as body weight, measurements of your body circumference, progress photos, or a body fat scan. Be consistent and don't adjust your numbers based on a little more or a little less activity on a given day. You come back at the end of those two to three weeks, and then you can make changes based upon the results that you're either getting or the results that you want to start getting. The link for the FBB calculator is in the description below, so please go give it a try and let me know what questions come up. Functional bodybuilding is here to support you with your training and nutrition so you can look good, move well, and feel amazing for the long haul. Thanks for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. All right.